Okay, who am I? Uh, now, I've been trying not to be the face of this movement. As I've told many a person, this is not so much about me. But yet it is about me because I am a citizen of Cape Breton Island. It's pretty fundamental in that context. Studied business and university at UCCB at the time, now CBU. I've also uh, been involved in marketing, sales, and business development, and some strategic development. What got me interested in trying to do something for Cape Breton Island is the fact that I've lived here. And from the past 30 years, I've seen very little in terms of improvement. In fact, all I've witnessed is the constant, the constant decline of our communities. This is engineered decline. Engineered, and I mean that, people. You know, this, is, this isn't just something, you can't look at all these different things that are happening on our island and say to yourself that, oh well, this is just happening because, well, you know, we got an aging population, we got this, we got that. No, it's being engineered. We have the highest taxes in the CBRM for businesses, for example. So, if you're a business coming to Nova Scotia, where are you gonna settle? Where they have the highest business taxes or where you have the lowest business taxes? I've been reading, watching politics to a certain degree, not completely engaged until one day I was uh, reading about what Dan Christmas said about Cape Breton should be its own province, followed up by a professor at the university did a, uh, he put an article in the Cape Breton Post that I read online. And what Dr. Johnson said really struck a nerve with me. He said that the province of Nova Scotia would never allow Cape Breton to separate or be on its own because it would remove much of its, the province's claim of being a have-not province. That really kind of struck me, that, that line in that article really struck a nerve. And, and it, it got me pondering, is Cape Breton, are we, in decline or are we suffering to such a degree because of circumstance or is it because of design or is it based on design? Are we purposely being kept down to essentially make sure the province gets its 1.8 billion dollars a year? That was somewhat followed up by a, an article in the Contrarian by uh, Parker Donham. And Parker Donham said, with all the transfers and whatnot, it works out to be approximately $3.2 billion. Wow, that's a lot of reasons to essentially keep a people down. $3.2 billion. Someone's got to take action. So I opted, hey, I'm a marketing guy. I have technology, I have a laptop, I have social media. How, what are the people of Cape Breton feeling? You know, we're not being told what, what they feel. It's not being shared and it's not being addressed. I walked up, I flipped open the plastic cap and I pressed the button and I fired the shot across the bow. I created the group, Cape Breton United Party. And in less than a month, we had over 3,000 members. I, ironically, we actually displaced the Nova Scotia Liberals on social media. I wrote an email to every MLA. I wrote them an invitation first. I asked them, 
you know, cast off your collars, essentially. The red, blue, and orange collars that you're wearing. Join us and fight for our island. Fight for our children. You know, if it's more important to be a liberal than a Cape Bretoner, that's a problem. Because you're willfully ignoring the problems and you're participating in our decline. You can't participate, you have to fight it. With that in mind, I said, well, how do we get the right people up there, you know, who are acting with integrity and intent that really see this island as being something that can really grow and be prosperous? If I was a teacher who wants a 30-year career teaching in Cape Breton, I'd be voting for the Cape Breton United Party. If I was a construction worker and wanting to have a career or work in Cape Breton, I'd be voting the Cape Breton United Party.